Hi, I'm Ariel. You're watching She Wants Addiction, and today I'm going to talk about what I'm going to be reading for the Queer Lit Readathon. And this is going to be my first time participating in the readathon. I believe they're on round three. This is a, a readathon that's personally relevant to me because I don't know if I've stated it on my channel before, but I am bi, so I'm super excited. I decided to go through my bookshelf and see what books I already own that I could read for the challenges. I actually had more books than I thought I would, most of them being nonfiction. So starting off, I've got Becoming Nicole, The Transformation of an American Family by Amy Ellis Nutt about a male to female trans kid and it is told by a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. I think it deals a lot with how it affected the whole family and just an outsider's perspective on that. So. This should be an interesting read. The next one is one that I just recently picked up. It's called Racism 101 by Nikki Giovanni. And I've never read anything by her, but I know that she is a queer and feminist person of color who was involved in the black arts movement. It's a bunch of essays and think pieces that she wrote on things relating to racism. So I'm really excited to dig into this and, you know, get a glimpse into her mind. The next one is Orange is the New Black by Piper Kerman. And you all have probably already heard of this because of the Netflix series. I actually used to watch the TV show and I kind of just tapered off of watching it. I don't really remember why. But I loved the show for a while because, mo I mean, 90% of the characters are women. And it's really female focused. And there's also, you know, lesbian relationships on the show. Piper is in an on and off again relationship with her ex-girlfriend, Alex. I wondered if that's actually been fictionalized or if it's actually a part of this memoir, like it actually happened. So I've been curious about that and the readathon gives me a good excuse to finally dig into this one and see the real story. And then the last two, these are both, I'll show you the back, Triangle Classics. Underneath it says, Illuminating the Gay and Lesbian Experience. The first one, Family Dancing by David Leavitt. And this is a collection of short stories dealing with LGBTQ issues and it is written by a gay man. And then the other one, Surpassing the Love of Men by Lillian Faderman. It talks about the history of lesbian relationships through time, starting off with the concept of a romantic friendship and then I assume bringing us up to modern day. Um, <laughs> it's pretty hefty. I remember I started trying to read it one time and yeah, it's very academic. I'm also going to be checking out the graphic novel Motor Crush because I've been hearing so much about it and the art looks super super cute. Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. That was a book of short stories that I started last year and I read the story about the girl with the ribbon around her neck and it was really moving and affecting and sticks with me even till now so I'm like I really need to go back and read that. I'll also be looking into the group book because Yvette from Book Cave, the summary that she gave of it sounded really really interesting. So yeah that's a lot of reading but I'm super excited for this readathon. Because it's only a week I don't know that I'll actually get to all of these but but at least it gives me something to strive for, or an idea of the direction that I want my reading to take. If you guys are participating, because it's not too late, leave me a comment, let me know what you're reading, what you think about my picks, link me to your videos, <laughs> shamelessly self-promote, or even if you don't want to do that, you can just tell me, you know, what your orientation is, or if you're an ally, anything related to LGBTQ stuff. I do plan on doing a vlog for the Queer Readathon, like a week-long vlog. So that will probably be my next video and something to look forward to for me. 